I consider the most dreaded part of guitar making, and that is cutting the binding ledges. Now, I say dreaded because it was took me forever to figure out a way to properly cut binding ledges on a spherical top or back um, guitar. And in my case, I've got both top and back, so it was really important to figure this out. Now, I went through a number of iterations of how to do this, and I came up with what I'm going to show you now. I'm not going to go through the whole history of it, because that would take too long. This is what I got. Now, you'll notice that the heart of this is one of these bits, router bits, that happens to have a bearing on it. Okay, But there's also a bearing here. The reason being that both of these bearings are going to ride on the side of the guitar. Okay, It's important that they both ride on the side. There's also a couple strips right here, nicely rounded so they don't gouge anything. And they're at an angle going up, not that severely, but going up so that they can ride along the top and provide a depth stop. Now, I don't want it all the way across and I don't want it totally flat because my top is not totally flat. My back is not totally flat. Okay, And of course that's all attached to the router. Now the way I did this was set up so that I could use two bearings of exactly the same size so that I always cut exactly the right size binding ledge. Now this, of course, makes is determined by having this pretty flat. You don't want a huge amount of rippling on this. There's a little bit of rippling on this guitar side, and we'll see how that works. But as long as one of these bearings doesn't dig into the ripple, we should be okay. We'll see. All that really would do is give me a little difference in angle. Not much. So, we'll see if you can see how this is built. Notice that I have a secondary um, flange right here. I could actually put this bearing onto here if I needed to, if I needed to go deeper for whatever reason. Um, and I could move this down here or even here if I needed to do this on a very thin body instrument. I haven't actually done that because I make fairly deep bodied instruments, but that's how it works. So of course the depth adjustment is on the router itself, and it's really just a matter of getting the right bearing size for the particular ledge you've got. I do two millimeters on the main binding ledge, and then a an additional millimeter and a half for the whatever uh, almost all of my purfling is about that at least if I do say a black white black or something like that so that's what this is and it is kind of a skill to use this it's not something that that is going to be just whip it around. Um, you do need to be able to hold this properly in place in both both directions as you're going around and because it is basically a, a fly cutter of sorts it's only got two two blades to it. You have to go the right direction with the grain or you could chip out the, the wood so you don't want to do that. So hopefully you know what that means and you don't need to watch me do it.